Okay, we got like uh, seven or eight right now. We're just kind of loading up. Uh, I'm going to be right back. And then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Um, let me get this stuff all laid out. Okay, I'll be right back. We're at nine. We're getting close. Okay. <clears throat> All right. How are we doing on head count? So uh, we got chat going on. Um, once again, we're split on chat. Um, between uh, YouTube Live and uh, Discord. Oh, and let me... There, I'm joining the voice channel on... Uh, on Discord. Can you guys have everybody hear me okay? And I can hear you for now until it like st you know, stalls out. If there's some point where you perceive that maybe I'm not, you know, hearing you, would you please just chat me up pretty, you know, use all caps or something to get my attention? Because um, I do have, what's that? Yeah. Yeah, and what happens is the problem is it's kind of screen real estate, right? I've got so many, right? I know the, I know the thing, Michael. Um, there's a, and that helps. What happens is um, the, the Discord chats are like coming through uh, little alerts. You know what I mean? Kind of just like dropping. And that's kind of, kind of how I mostly see them because I'm limited on screen real estate. I really do need another external monitor. But anyway, here we are. On what? monitors um i only have one external monitor hooked up here i have i have like a flat panel i moved you know i moved houses moved offices and i have like a flat panel that i used to have you know what would have been in that approximate position on my right um and i've got another monitor or two you know it's more a matter of just kind of getting it organized and then of course I know for the gamers, uh, there's no uh, conflict at all on how many monitors you need to create your surround experience. Uh, but I have, where I have, I need desk space too. You know, that's the trade-off. What are you saying, Michael? Yeah. Yeah. So I've really just got my laptop. You know, I'm very used to working from my laptop with just the laptop. 
Um, you know, I've kind of, I, I never have an external keyboard. I never have an external mouse. Um, and I kind of get used to working on that, on that screen. Uh, and I've got the, the nice, you know, the big, it's old now, but Thunderbolt display. And, uh, Alrighty, how we doing? I think we're, we're at 14, 16. I think we're we're about right. Okay. 18. Yeah. I just wanted to check. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Is that mic? The other mic? Sorry, yeah. Wait, who was who was talking? Pepper? It was it was me. Okay. Yeah. You can kind of see uh, there were a couple lights that flickered right at the same time. So I wasn't 100% sure, but yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, so where the heck are we? What were we doing? By the way, so um, really number one, every time number one is how you guys doing? You know, what are you, are you, you know, are you hanging in there? The, the isolation is kind of, you know, it depends on your personality type. So Everybody else doing okay? You know, any family going down sick? Um, any kind of just kind of community, just community health updates that anybody wants to give? Just anything that you know, um, you know. You know that tiger in New York has COVID-19 now. That There's a tiger in the New York Zoo. Yeah, that's fun. So that's like... <laughs> That's like, okay, writers, uh, sharpen your pencils, go. You know, suddenly, I don't know, it's suddenly like, you know, I don't know, like 12 monkeys with all the uh, animals roaming around in the future, you know, and a, and a, and a global pandemic. I don't know how many, of you, how many of you have seen that movie, but uh, you know what I mean? But now it's, of course, the, the plot twist would be it's 12 monkeys for those. It's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting movie. Um, I think it's a little overrated, <laughs> my own, my own take on it, but uh, the twist would be all of those animals roaming around the future of New York are all, of course, carriers of the virus, you know, which would be, you know, I don't know, that's, yeah, so apparently, and people are like, I didn't think it could jump to animals. You're like, you do. It, it, it supposedly, they think, came from bats, you know, another mammal. So yeah, I think that it can jump species. I think, I think that's been established as far as we know, so. Not a shock to me, the idea that, you know, it's going to it's gonna potentially jump. But then it's like everybody with their dogs, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You go out on a walk, your dog, you stay 10 feet away from somebody else and the two dogs. Ah, I shouldn't even bring that up. That's just harsh. I'm so sorry <laughs> for those of you that, like, have a dog. And this is like... <clears throat> anyway, I'm... I just want... For those that take comfort in their dogs, I don't... I don't... I like dogs. I just don't like owning one and having to live with one but I love them how's that I feel the same way I guess about my children right uh, I should probably stop right now I think I'm going deeper <laughs> yeah please save me Michael please yeah yeah thank you and <laughs> okay Yes. Oh, Matt's good question. Hey, Steve, mute your mic while you're typing, okay? Um, hey, no sweat. We're going to call you out. Um, no, so Michael, this is, and I really would be curious about anybody else's, you know, contributions to that. Um, so, you know, what do you do in a time of, of motivation, you know, demotivation? And I think it's really, really true. I mean, there's no question that when you have this big, you know, kind of global event and it affects everything and you're watching, even if you're not directly, you know, uh, immediately affected, you know, I've got family members that are already out of work, you know, that are already thrown onto the unemployment, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, so it kind of varies, you know what I mean, in terms of how hard it actually hits you. And I, and I remember, I think I mentioned the last time I went through something that felt emotionally like this was 9-11. Just, you know what I mean, just in the sense that there's this large thing and suddenly a lot of walls come down and there's more of a sense of community. You know what I mean? There's a little bit more of a unity. There was like a wave of unity 
that kind of washed over the country, I thought, after 9-11. And I feel like there's a similar thing if you can just, you know, stay the hell off Twitter, basically. I think that there is a similar sort of among the actual rank and file. Uh, so I try to, I try to, um, okay, so back to Michael's original question. What I do is I try to just, you try to, you know, roll a little lemonade here if you can. So I try to take things that ordinarily I can't do, like just, um, you know, like playing my drum kit in the middle of the day, you know, usually whatever, you're busy, you're on campus, you're away, you know, so I'll just like slide out and something physical, I think getting outside, going on a walk, getting some sun, um, you know, you essentially saying, well, here's some things I wouldn't have been able to do because of the commute and everything. So I'm going to go do some Duolingo. I'm going to learn, you know, whatever your cool language is for those of you that are doing duo, you know, or I'm going to learn to play the drums better. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to set myself up with things that are just purely Italian. Erica, boom, molto bene, brava, brava. Um, but we're going to, um, so I try to, um, you know, and then, and then I just try to, you know, have contact with people and Discord has been great for that. Just jumping on, you know, with students and still having, fa you know, a little bit of that face-to-face, -face, you know, via the video chat on Discord. Um, and frankly, having honestly, you know, Devin said, because Devin was sucking up by saying he actually misses class, uh, misses coming to campus and going to class. And uh, so, and that it's actually really true, I think, getting, having something to get out and, you know, just have a little more of the blend, you know, individual with, with other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Devin, sucking up, that's what I said. Um, no, and so I find that, you know, just jumping on. The other thing I did, I mentioned it last time, right? I have since established a, a Discord server for the School of Rock. And I posted a link earlier on this, uh, on the general thread here in 3450. There's zero pressure. But if anybody wants to join the School of Rock, I'll be playing the role of Jack Black. And uh, that's another thing, Michael, I'm just trying to, you know, I love that kind of social contact. My band can't have practice. You know, we can't do band practice. So let's go make a distributed video of, of us, you know, whoever wants to jump on and do something. So I don't know. That's, anybody else got anything that's working for you in terms of trying to stay motivated? Because it really does trash your, uh, it trashes the rhythm for dang sure. You know, you find yourself, I'm way more nocturnal right now than I typically have been, you know. But no, any, um, anybody else? Um, yeah, what do you guys do? Yeah, yeah, hard to keep a schedule, Devin says. Um, in fact, there was, a, there was actually a fantastic thread last night. I don't know when it was that, that Travis and I were we were having this elaborate thread about um, the kinks uh, and the amazing classic You Really Got Me from 1964. And uh, that thread kind of hit its zenith about 11.30, a.m., 2 a.m., <laughs> somewhere like that. And we're just cranking and it's, it was, you know, to me, that's a lift. That's a social lift. What are you guys doing to get through? I've got to have some social stuff. Yeah, I've got to have a certain amount of that social interaction, even if it's, you know, not, I love the face-to-face. -face. And I really, and I think this is where the personality type comes into play. For some of you, it's like nothing actually changed. You know, I mean, it's better because I don't have to come on campus at all, and this is great. And some of you, there's a level of anxiety and that kind of struggle and discouragement. So you got to really go rely on whatever, whatever the positive things are that lift you. You know what I mean? You've got to, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, hey, welcome, Zach. Glad to, glad to have you dropping in here, man, to be a spectator. Um, no, anybody else? What are you guys doing? What, what are you doing? Because, again, you know, for the, for the real introverts, um, you know, it's really not as hard for the introverts as it is for the extroverts. That's just, that's just true. You know? And the true, true extroverts are just really, it can be really depressing, you know, really discouraging. So anyway, what do you guys got? Give me, give me some share here. What do you?
what have we got? Um, so Delia said she started an online game group, right? The Calling Family. Oh, Jackbox Games. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You can do that remotely. Yeah. Really? So and that's for the for the YouTube uh, lurkers. Um, Michael just said, you know, like drumming up, you know, tracking down friends from high school, and you know, I don't know. There's like to me, it's like a, it's like a pivot. You know what I mean? Like a funky social pivot. And I think that I think that um, creative. You know, so Ben said that works picked up quite a bit, um, and yeah. So anyway, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to start the School of Rock. So if anybody wants to join that, you know, um, you're more than welcome. In fact, I should probably, let me drop a, an invite onto the YouTube channel. So, you know, I just noticed, um, um, yeah, so I just noticed Zach on and, uh, who's not in the, on the discord, who's not in the class actually, but really seriously, great to see you on there, Zach. But so there's the, uh, there's the school of rock. Uh, invite for the Discord uh, server, um, but that was the only way. What I what I think I'm seeing a lot of is is people like playing stupid Facebook games. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't know. I don't know. To me, the people are we're social. We're social animals. You know, we are uh, absolutely social animals, and uh, so we need some of that somewhere somehow. And uh, anyway, I just encourage you to figure out what. It's going to be true to your rhythm, true to your thing, you know, while staying safe. Um, um, yeah, let me see. So McKay was saying, you know, that it's just hard. You said hard to keep the gusty going. Is that is that a typo? Um, that working from home has been. And by the way, for those of you that have like, you know, kids at home gusto. Yeah. For those of you that have um, that have kids at home. I just man. Yeah, I just my heart goes out to you. Okay. I'm, I'm flying solo and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And so I can, you know, play the drums. The only question is, am I going to bother the neighbors? Um, other than that, but well, you got all the little kids. Um, you know, I know some of you have kind of, uh, you know, expressed some of that. That's just brutal. That's really, really brutal. Yes. Invite them to just come out on the porch and listen to my, my amazing drum solo. So, yeah, um, okay. Okay, I want Devin, I want to hear more about, anyway. Are you talking about, what are we doing? So, last night we were Amish for three hours. There's a CJ. Um, Jackbox, oh yeah. So, Pro was doing a virtual scavenger hunt where you make teams and do a bunch of different tasks. We are Amish for three hours. Cook dinner. That's actually from a social media fast perspective. It's actually really healthy. <laughs> Cook dinner in the fire in the backyard. Play games. But that's fantastic, CJ. That's great. Um, oh, by the way, which Sabrina are we talking about? Are we talking about the the Harrison Ford movie, Sabrina? Is that is that the movie, or is there some other Sabrina that I'm not aware of? Oh, it's a Netflix series. Okay, all right. Yeah, by the way, there is Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Seriously. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'll have to dial in. Uh, there was that movie Sabrina with the Harrison Ford and whatever her name is. Um, anyway, and that's actually a great old movie, but of the same name with no relationship. Okay. Let's do, let's do some action here. And by the way, let me see. Yeah. So again, if anybody wants to join the School of Rock, we are... Just the only, the only requirement is, there's no requirement. That's the only requirement. Uh, somebody needs to jump on and do something creative with me. And I don't care what it is. It can be music, can be drama, can be like short films that we just build with our phones and then blend it together. Um, I don't know. I mean, really, really, it's anything. But we're calling it the School of Rock because the original idea was let's throw a band together and uh, do some do some remote stuff. Okay. Okay, gentle friends, let's do. Okay, and also let me. 
uh, throw this at you. I'm just dropping this in the Discord channel. Is that the right one? Yeah, yeah. If anybody's interested, like if you just get bored all of a sudden and you want to just tune out, uh, there's a video that one of my friends sent to me. Um, this guy is really good musically. I don't know who these Holder and his family people are, but this guy who's like the dad or the whatever, he's got some serious golden pipes. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of super cheesy parodies. Uh, most of the time it's because the quality is so bad that you're like, ah, that's cute, you know, but um, it's actually, this is actually good. So I tend to only like them when they're as a certain level of quality. Okay, okay, let's, uh, let's do the thing. Um, step number one, let's go. Um, let me drop this over and blow it up. I hope that's mm, adequately visible for everybody. But I just wanted to go back and revisit what we're doing. Uh, like I said before, we're going we're gonna to wind up early Okay, we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up activity diagrams. Yeah, and then we're doing communication diagrams. I think we can wrap that up. We got a little bit more of design of everyday things, but that's you know, this is this week right now. We're Wednesday. I think it's Wednesday, and um, and then it's just two weeks. So we're gonna do basically a little bit of wrap up, and then you're gonna kind of fly solo on these homeworks. And, by the way, I didn't actually, eh, I'm such a dumb, I'm so dumb. Uh, yeah, that was homework seven and was the singleton pattern from chapter five. So what we'll do is basically we'll drop in, it'll be like chapter six, seven, eight, nine, something like that. And you're basically just going to kind of self-pace on those. And I'll get that up. The deadlines, I'm totally, totally flex on deadlines with the only caveat being that you still have to do it. Um, okay. But if you, you know, if there's things that are really getting in the way of all that with, with all the dynamics that we're dealing with, then uh, that's, you know, I'll, obviously I'll work with you on that. So, all right. That's really all we're going to do. We're going to wrap up those. You guys are going to work on those chapters. We're going to wrap up these lectures. Uh, and then I'm going to throw together some kind of final, which I'm going to have to do. You know, I think that last year, I think last year I may have actually done a, uh, like a take home final, just kind of like a build me a doc, you know, answer the questions, build me a doc. Maybe we'll just do something like that again, you know, and save the hassle of having to jump on canvas, you know, on a canvas quiz. So... Okay, um, anybody got anything else before I jump into some happy lecture madness? Okay, let's do happy lecture madness. Um, hashtag happy lecture madness. So, okay, I wanted to do... Where am I? There we go. There's Lecture Madness. We were talking activity diagrams. Were we not? I think we were. And we were getting down to it. Um, all right. So I'm going to get rid of that. Actually, we'll just get rid of that. Yeah. So let me break this down to where we were. I hope... Um, I hope this has been interesting, this whole, oh, no, you know what we were doing? No, I remember now. We actually finished. We finished. I bring, your, I bring to your attention, remember this? Who can forget this not UML diagram from hell um, with, frankly, just some of the great graphics and then complete, utter lack of usability. Um, yeah, we did, we did do that. And then um, we ended... We were, I was pressing for time. I went over. I'm really sorry. We're going to make it up by like literally just like not having to get together the last week or something. We'll figure something out. Um, and then we did, oh yeah, we were, yeah, we were talking a little bit about this one. I got a little distracted, 
but I was like really confused by all of the graphics. Way too busy, way too cluttered. Oops, sorry. Way too cluttered, right? That looks like a bird, like the little, you know, the little tippy bird, the little, the little drink bird that'll like come down and, you know, drink from your cup. Um, there's a lot about this I like, right? We talked about this person's bowl cut um, and how we didn't like that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that was kind of it. Um, and by the way, I'm having some interesting experiences with, um, in 2810, we, you know, we're having to do online, the, we do these, those module exams that we do for the testing lobby, which we typically do downstairs in the lobby, right? Moving all those over to Canvas and trying to do like Proctorio and, you know, it's, man, it's really remarkable. Um, and uh, Devin and I were talking about this because he's my, one of my TAs for 2810 and also here in the class. But, you know, I was pointing out, you know, do you, do you see how all of this is really in the end about use cases? It's really, there are just situations where it's like, there's a thing I want to do and I can't do it, you know? And when you take that away from me, and why do you take it away from me? You take it away from me because you didn't conceptualize that a user would actually want to do that thing, okay? Okay, oh, you know what? Shoot, I was, I was jumping on my last, uh, my last uh, set of slides for the design of everyday things, and it was a problem. Uh, we've already gone through it, so I can't do that. Um, okay. And did I play for you, did I play for you the, the, the medieval help desk, the person with the, the book that was used to the old scrolls? The, there was like a monk. Did I, did I, okay. All right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Shoot. Okay. I'll drum, I'll drum up something else. Okay. I promise. Uh, the other thing would be probably really nice to talk about we, I didn't play for you the John Cleese video on creativity, but I'd like to go back and hit that before we're done. Um, did we talk about it a lot or do we, I know we watched the, uh, did we, I know we watched the, um, the Ken Robinson video. So we did watch the, okay. And so we did, we did watch uh, in class, the John Cleese. I can't remember if we just talked about it or if we watched it. Mm. Yeah, maybe it was. Anyway, but there's some specific things I want to just make sure we touch back on. Okay, well then, there's nothing left but to jump onto communication diagrams, which is not a long uh, lecture. And so let's do it. And then I probably, I probably owe you a little bit more of a patterns wrap up. I'm making some notes for myself. I do hope that um, one of my goals for this class is to kind of like warp your minds. Um, you know, this class is a lot more experiential. It's a lot less about, you know, here's the five things you need to know how to do in order to do double integrals across polar coordinates or something. Not that that isn't important. I'm not bad-mouthing polar coordinates. I am saying that that's a skill you can acquire. And this is a lot more about the sort of the experiential evolution in terms of thinking. So I just want you to know that's very much. Oh, Devin, I want to hear about... So Devin said um, on, on the Discord that they, they care about these patterns at my internship this com this summer, and they asked if I was familiar with them. Devin, do you want to, uh, I don't know if you want to chat those. Um, and then, again, for the for those that are strictly on YouTube, um, you're not going to necessarily hear the audio, but um, maybe somebody who's listening can, like, if you wouldn't mind, like, chatting a summary over to, over to um, YouTube Live. Would somebody be willing to do that?
Did they say Goff, Devin? They literally called him, okay? Angle four, yeah. Okay. Like strategy, whatever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right and you have the book you you know there's the there's the skater chick book for a reason right you know <laughs> now <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's good. No, that's interesting. That's interesting. And, um, but they didn't like, you know, hand you a, hand you a dry erase marker and put you on a whiteboard and say, why don't you implement, um, you know, observer? They didn't, I mean, right. I, to me, that would be like way overly pedantic. Um, to make you like literally like at whatever, Nobody expects you, where's the skater chair? Nobody expects you to have this thing memorized, okay? She does not, even she, right there, you see it? Even she does not expect you to have this thing memorized, nor do I. And to me, it's more about exposure than you kind of look things up, but it's that notion, you know? Yeah, right, right. That's awesome. That's a good report. Um, and you know, I do have I do have affection for the skater chick. You know that, right? I do. Skater chick, you know, kind of looks like a couple of my daughters, ish. You know what I mean? There's a certain affection. <laughs> so I don't mean, but but she is a skater chick, and I don't think there's anything wrong with being a skater chick. You know. I have long borders in my family. Okay. Okay, th thanks for that report, Devin. That's actually, I mean, one of the things, right, you know how this thing goes, right? I mean, I'm trying to like convince you, persuade you, whatever, that, hey, this stuff's really important. You're like, ah, oh, the old white-haired guy says it's important. And, you know, do you believe it or not? And sometimes I know some of this stuff can feel um, a bit arbitrary, you know, and like, why are we learning this? And, you know, and, and I'm, you know, my own exposure is like, yeah, you see it here or there, you know, and some of you might be, you know, in your, in your future, you know, seeing a lot, you know, and, and others of you will like never see it. So it, it's hard to normalize that, but it's still valuable. Okay. Let's talk about communication diagrams. And this is the last, this is the last UML diagram, I'm a jiggy that we're going to talk about. And um, so, um, also, by the way, I was debating just doing this. Does that work if I just roll with that for lecture, kind of for the duration? Anybody buying? Well, those of you on the Discord chat, there's a 20 second delay to the video. So, this is just, you know. Something that can, I don't know. I actually use this sometimes in business meetings um, when I'm doing video chat for, it's just, there's a story behind it that I'm not going to tell you right now. The Colonel, me and the Colonel. It, see, it's about, it's about, I don't know. That, somebody made it for me and it was, I don't know. I think they're trying to say I'm old, something like that. Anyway, um, okay, communication, let's do it. Let's do this thing. Um, you already know what my punchline is, right? Can somebody just tell me what my punchline is going to be? Please, just by now, you should know what my punchline is going to be. Oh, Bueller? 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 
What's my punchline? Come on, folks. <laughs> no, Michael. No, I want you guys to do it. Come on. What is, what is my speech? Before I launch into this UML diagrams, why am I inflicting these UML diagrams on you? And why this set? What, what's, what's my punchline going to be? Yeah, what else? Ooh, okay. What else? That's good. What else am I going to say? Because that to me is actually secondary. A means to communicate? Okay. Agreed. What else? What's that? Hang on. Uh, yeah, so, De so Delia said, giving ourselves a framework to talk about and, uh, and or understand material. Yeah, absolutely. And then what does Sapir Wharf have to do with... By the way, these are like, these are questions from the final, okay? What does Sapir Wharf have to do with that? Why do I keep, why do I keep talking about Sapir Wharf? By the way, Michael, you're, you're assuming that I've got Dahlia's name correct and, and I, I may be off slightly as well, so. <laughs> but anyway, so Dahlia, please, please correct us, okay? Because uh, we, we absolutely want to get it right. Um, I think I've got it, but I'm not sure. Um, no, what else? What else? Why Sapir Wharf? Okay. You got to know this. Uh, Erica says, by knowing the language, you can have the right thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's not even about the right thoughts, because I don't even know. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Thank you, Delia. Um, the, uh, it's not even about the right thoughts. It's just about the ability to have thoughts of a certain type, right? Because Sapir Wharf, I'm just going to beat on this again. And then you get to go watch whatever that movie was. What was it called? Arrival? What was the Sapir Wharf movie with uh, Jeremy Renner and Amy Adams? Arrival. Thank you. Um, no, but, uh, but Sapir Wharf, um, you know, it's about the, the, the strict version of Sapir Wharf says that you can't think certain thoughts unless you have the, the vocabulary to think those thoughts. Another really powerful uh, story that I really recommend you read is the autobiography of Helen Keller. You know, to me, all of the, um, all the movies, you know what I mean? What were the movies? The Miracle Worker and, you know what I mean? And there's always this thing where she's like doing the water thing and she's signing into her hand, whatever. You know, all true, but there's nothing quite like um, reading, you know, reading the autobiography, reading Helen Keller's own description of that whole process of what happened when she acquired language, what happened and what was the influence on her ability to think. Okay, she kind of talks about being in this sort of like a, like a cognitive darkness. It's just totally Sapir Whorf. Um, but she talks about being in this kind of like a cognitive darkness. And she felt a little bit like an animal, you know, she would just like, was very different, like the movies portray, she was just, you know, would act out, was just, you know, didn't have the ability to communicate, and which was sort of counter. I mean, the inability to communicate is counter to human nature, right? As, as humans, we have this natural instinct to communicate, right? Which is why I know you know the stories about, you know, the, the twin, there's some story, I can't remember the details, but it was like twin girls that were, I don't know, raised for 10 years or something with, they were basically uh, self-isolating and quarantining um, before it was cool, and uh, with a really, really old grandma, I don't know, that's my recollection of the story, old grandma's like 90, you know, or something, and grandma's like, didn't talk, like, at all, so these, these girls who were, um, you know, they weren't deaf, they weren't, they weren't dealing, you know, with, with an inability physically to hear sound and to talk and communicate, but they had no there was like no TV, no books. They were basically, if anybody can come up with a story and post, that would be great. But basically, um, they 
evolved their own language. They literally evolved a language of their own creation, dynamically living essentially like in a sensory deprivation chamber with only the two of them. Fascinating, right? Because there was such an instinctive need and desire to express ourselves, you know, verbally and otherwise, you know, which is why the arts, in my view, are so absolutely critical to our humanity. Um, you know, it's not just, no offense to the deep math heads here, but I mean, there's something really powerful and important to the arts that speaks to our humanity, which is relating also to the quality without a name, right? There is music, there is art, there is poetry that speaks to us because it resonates somehow with our humanity, right? Anyway, so uh, the autobiography of Helen Keller, huge for understanding linguistics and the acquisition of language and the superior war hypothesis, frankly, even though it doesn't mention it. You know, I was reading that back whenever it was, 30 years ago, I don't know. Um, and, uh, and it was just Sapir Whorf just washed all over it. So these, these diagrams are basically that same idea. Until you have this, right, you get that, like we talked about in 2810, I don't even know where to start, you know. And that, is, which is such a boneheaded thing to say for anybody because everybody knows how to start, literally. Like, ask somebody who knows more than you. That's one place to start, you know. It's 2020, look it up, you know, look it up online, you know. I'm just saying, you know, everybody knows actually, in fact, how to start. Uh, but um, anyway, until you have, you know, this understanding of like, for example, these golf patterns, the idea of patterns, these diagrams, you know, you're like, hey, come design our system. And you're like, uh, but instead you can go hit Fowler, go back to these slides which you can download from Canvas <clears throat> and basically be just like, you know, are there state machine issues? Are there communication issues? Are there activities? Are there, you know what I mean? All of those give you vocabulary that allow you to think certain thoughts. So those are the key punchlines. Okay, so let's get on to this. Um, specifically communication diagrams, okay? So this is specifically about um, message passing, okay? So we deal with this a lot more in uh, 4450 when we talk about programming languages and language paradigms. Um, and in particular, the object-oriented paradigm, okay? The object-oriented paradigm was a paradigm about modularity, okay? That you have these individual... Now, I'm trying to find some objects here without, like, I don't know. I'm trying to find generic objects that don't look like something else, and I'm kind of striking out. You need, like, you know, a couple of baseballs, you know, or a couple of... Hang on a second. Nah, it's, it's too late. I should have thought this through. Now you're egging me on. Um, I know it is. I know it is, Michael. Um, hang on, I'm going to just take one, I'm going to try one thing. Okay, I have a couple objects. All right, I found a, oh dear. One of, the, one of them is this light bulb which just fell on the floor and didn't break, thank goodness, okay? The other one, by the way, so I've got these two objects. Now this one was something that my daughter made for me, okay? It's, this is an actual cross-stitch, handmade. But if anybody wants to get their phones ready, just out of, curi just out of curiosity, I'm going to throw that up there. There we go. It's always hard, by the way, to when you can't actually, you know, to try to see the screen. Anyway, if anybody wants to, like, check out the QR code, I'll just leave it there for a few seconds. This, by the way, is message passing. Yeah, I'm going to bring it back to the lectures. You know I will. Anyway, check it out. Okay. Um, anyway, so there's, there's a message. There's a message, right? A QR code is a message. And then I'm sort of transmitting that message. And then you're going to grab your phone, right, and watch it. You know, look it up on the screen and then do the, do the QR code. 
So if anybody's interested and curious what my daughter would put on a cross stitch for me. And by the way, she does this professionally. She can make you one of these for money. Just saying. And I've still got to like hang it someplace. <clears throat> it's a little ornamentish. Anyway, anybody, anybody, uh, anybody tracking that? You can look at it later as well. The video will be up. Okay. So where are we? Um, so it's uh, what we're going to see is essentially something that looks a great deal like a state machine. And notice that the last thing we talked about, the activity diagrams, also looked a lot like state machines because the notion of transitioning from one thing to another thing, you know, that that, that is a very common idea in software. Um, and, you know, but, it, but the state machine, you know, we talked a little bit about the differentiation between, you know, the state machine would be like the internal states that, that something moves through, whereas the activity diagrams were more of like workflow. You know, the workflow as something move, maybe moves through production or moves through a warehouse, you know, and then through a supply chain, um, et cetera. This one's very similar to those again, but this has more to do with here are these objects and like, okay, step number one, you send a message here. Step number two, you send a message back. Number three, now you send a message over there. It's more about the communication, okay? So when you work in sort of like um, data communications, you know, network protocols, this is the kind of thing, something like this is, is absolutely, um, you know, gonna, gonna be valuable for you, okay? And that's true of any situation or any system in which there is some kind of a communication protocol. And I don't necessarily mean like, you know, protocol as in TCP IP, which are protocols, but the word protocol really has to do with, with sort of like how you do what you do, right? If you're going to meet the queen, then you have to, I don't even know what the rules are. I've never met the, I've seen the queen, but I've never met the queen. Um, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, right? It's like, when you, when you approach the throne, you will turn around, bow, genuflect. You know what I mean? You will not make eye contact with Her Majesty. You know what I mean? There's these rules that, and there's these rules about, you know, she will say you may approach and kiss the royal signet and then you will now do this. And it's really about, it really is about communication diagrams. You could do a communication diagram um, of any protocol. How, what do you do when you meet the queen? What do you do, you know, with any sort of interaction, right? Things that, you know, what do you, you know, if somebody approaches you and it's a business setting, you know, and they enter the room, you know, is it appropriate to shake their hand while you stay seated or do you stand up? to shake a hand, right? That's protocol. And the communication diagram really relates to that whole idea. Um, and what you, what I think you can start to see is if you were going to design, like remember on the, on the activity diagrams, we were doing, I don't know, we've been doing like order fulfillment and stuff, right? A lot of that, that sort of supply chain thing. There's a lot of information moving back and forth, right? Um, so I hope that makes sense. Uh, so what you're going to see is basically, thank you, Michael, for nodding your head virtually, um, is you're going to see the objects, the participants, okay? And this, by the way, it was just, it was, it was a round object. That's all I was going for. You know, these guys can like send information back and forth. I don't know. I, I have some, uh, I do have some juggling, some juggling balls around here somewhere. Um, again, my, the office is all, whatever the word is, skewampus, I think is a technical term. Okay. And the other thing we do is we see numbering. So here's an example back to our order again. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, so number one, let's identify a few things. Let's get this thing straight. There's, and there's only like four or five slides here. So we'll be done with this, you know, fairly quickly, but I want you to get the gist of it. Um, now, this is not a state. Do you guys see why this is not a state diagram? Can you already perceive it? The objects are just sitting there. And then number one is that there's a message from outside of this system. 
to calculate the price. You remember, um, what was the one? Was it the sequence diagrams, right? That looked like little uh, little nerve sheath with the, uh, was, that the, was that the sequence diagrams? I think it was where you had, in fact, I think, let me see. I want to just look real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like sequence diagrams. Um, and we'll come back to that. I've got, I've got a slide coming up. I was just trying to remind myself. But essentially like sequence diagram in the sense that these objects are just kind of like hanging out. And then an, a message comes to this one to an order, which is number one. And then the order sends the get quantity message to an order line and sends the get product message to an order line, right? Um, now there's nothing, there's no messaging going here to the A product. Um, so I'm not, I don't remember exactly what that, what that's doing. And, and again, I, you know, I don't care, right? <laughs> it's the, it's, there's some concepts here. Okay. And then I can send to get price, you know, get pricing details. So here's some things I don't like. Okay. And then I've got the end order is like calling itself with calculate discounts, calculate base price. And then finally get discount information, which is sent. Um, uh, now, the thing that, uh, hang on. Okay, yeah, so a little, a little thread discussion about the, uh, the QR code. Yeah, you know, look it up. Snooze you lose. Um, okay, now, uh, the, thing, the thing that I don't, like about this particular view and you'll notice it mirrors some of my criticisms of sequence diagrams which is I really really like the explicit come back right because to me you send me a message I return back to you a message in response you know so in my mind this ought to have because like for example for example am I supposed to go if you look at an order right with two and three Am I supposed to like send the get quantity and then send the get the get product and then the order line is just going to do something and I don't care? Or do I have to wait and get a response back about both of these things? Or do I have to send the two, get that acknowledged, and then I've got to get the three sent and get that acknowledged, but then I go do something. All of that's kind of hidden, right? So in my view... Remember that, you know, there's in my mind, unless you're working for a company that is a UML shop that makes you be, you know, rigidly adhering to these things. I'm a big advocate of, um, you know, uh, make it your own. You know what I mean? Adjust it. Build it so that it communicates what you really want to try to communicate. And for me, not having that information is like, giving me part of the information and then keeping a great deal of it just hidden from my view. Okay. Um, when, when it's not that big of a problem to just, you know, show me the response. Um, and I haven't looked at this slide for a while. And so I honestly don't remember this is, um, let me see transient link type. Uh, I don't honestly don't remember. I, I can look them up. It, it also indicates I don't care. Uh, the self link is self evident. And the non-normative, I don't even know. I don't remember. I haven't looked it up since I last did this. Um, so I'm, you know what I mean. You know, you know where I'm at on that. I'm pretty unrepentant about that. And um, and I don't even know what I. This is my slide, not a legal numbering scheme. I don't even know what that means. I haven't looked at this slide for a while. So and then, yes, yes, it is my slide. Yeah, yes, I have no excuse. Okay. Um, but, um, oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. I got it now. The, the, not a, not a legal numbering scheme, official UML requires the hierarchical numbers. Okay. One, and that would be 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, and 1.5.1, 1 .1, et cetera. So official UML. Um, the problem is at a certain level of nesting, you know, if you've got, you know, 3.7.2.1.1.1.1.1.3, you know, you got problems, right? 
Uh, for one thing, you might be trying to do too much in one diagram. Okay. You may need to like modularize that diagram to be a little more bite-sized. But anyway, that's what that means. And that's why he's like non-normative. This is officially the thing. But again, uh, you know, it's a little bit like, like use cases in the sense that like any of these, you're almost never going to um, design and articulate and diagram the entire freaking system. Almost never going to do that. Um, but there might be just something that you really need to get it right. You really need to understand it. Just that one thing really, really, you know, carefully. And you whiteboard that. And I've done this a million times, never an official UML, right? Where you get on the whiteboard with you and whoever's designing with you. And you're like, okay, and you draw a circle and then this guy's got to go over there and then that's going to get here and then this goes here and you start numbering them and then you build the flow. You do this all the time when you're building real software, um, especially when there's any modularity, which is like every real software, right? Yeah, when's that going to occur, right? Um, every time is when that's going to occur. If, and as soon as you have a server, front end, back end, I mean, anytime you stick like the internet in between. So when would that happen? Like everywhere now, you know, you can't even build an app, you know, without some connection, you know, to the internet. As soon as that happens, you're, you're sending messages and you're like waiting to make sure you've got what you need. Okay. Hope that makes sense. Uh, and as always, um, jump in with, you know, with any questions, comments, you know, you're not going to slow this thing down because we're, we're almost done with this. Um, and I really blew it on not actually having um, more, more design of everyday things to talk about, which we'll do next time. We'll, we'll be wrapping up soon. Okay. Anyway, so here's the thing. That's, there we go. Sequence diagrams versus communication diagrams. So this is the part where you got to, you need to pitch in. Um, if you're, again, if you're just on, on YouTube live, I got 20 viewers on YouTube live. Um, and I've got how many people in the, in the voice chat for discord? Eighteen. It's almost the same. It's almost the same uh, number. So there's maybe one or two on on YouTube Live that are not on Discord. Um, yeah. So okay. So Erica said per, that she prefers the sequence diagrams. Seeing the timeline helps me see better how things interact. Isn't that true? I mean, I'm not saying it's like the the correct. You know, Erica, the correct answer. Um, I am saying that that is just a really true and powerful observation, right? Because on the sequence diagram, you know, everything goes top to bottom, right? Time goes top to bottom. So I can see the thing like I can just graphically see it. Okay, so this comes back to, uh, you know what else I got to talk about? I'm going to talk about, I want to talk about Tufty before we're out of the semester. But you remember Tufty? Remember when we had our little interlude and we talked about Edward Tufty and the, the visual display of quantitative information, the, the most amazing book with the most boring title? Um, if anybody wants to uh, post that again, repost that to Discord and or, hey, hey Steve, can you uh, mute your mic again? Um, and uh, anyway, if somebody can post that, all right, Erica ordered the book. Yeah, um, can somebody just post that to, to um, the YouTube channel and to Discord, just an Amazon link? It's such a great, oh my gosh, it's such a fantastic book. Okay, but here's the point, here's the point. One of the things that we talked about, thank you, McKay, and if somebody can throw that out to, uh, to YouTube, that would be great. Um, we talked about this idea that Tufty, first place I ever heard it was Tufty, uh, which was that we talk about, we think about like how many bits is it going to, how many pixels is it going to take me to convey my information? And Tufty kind of flipped that and just said, no, it's information per pixel. You know, every pixel can be powerful, right? Okay, and the reason I'm bringing that up is that these essentially, these two diagrams essentially convey the same information. 
right? Don't they? Don't they? I mean, I've got, right? Look at the objects. I've got, I've got an order, an order line, a customer, and a product, right? I've got messages being passed. I've got get quantity. Get, I'm, I'm just kind of scanning. I'm going to look over this way because I can just read it a little better. Um, right? I got the get pricing. I think I got them all. I'm just, I'm just sanity checking to make sure that, that in fact it's identical and it is identical, right? It's absolutely identical. And so, so the same information, the same messages communicated by, by, you know, via the same objects. So why is the sequence diagram, you know, in other words, in other words, what you've done here is by ordering them sort of linearly this way. So you lay the objects out this way right? You, and it's not even swim lanes. You get that? You're, you're arranging them like you want to be swim lanes, which we use in the activity diagrams, right? That something is, you know, when is this activated? But they are actually kind of swim lanes if you wanted to draw it that way, right? Because like, okay, I can look at this graphic and I can see visually when, where, you know, when the order line is active, when the product is active, when the customer is active, and when the order is active. But it's all here too, but over here, it's like I've got this thick part that represents I'm active and I'm not. Well, the I'm active and I'm not only makes sense. This is, oh, this is so important, okay? That I hope this sinks into your, into your hearts and minds. But, and the reason that this is so critical um, is that the only thing that changed we have the same information. Can I put, see how it gets fat, right? It kind of goes, it's like I'm dashed and then I'm fat, right? And then I'm dashed and I'm fat again and then I'm just dashed, right? That fat part is when that object is active. It's doing stuff, right? Why can't I just drop that over? I mean, right? You're like, I've got this little thing that indicates action. Why can't I just drop that on the communication diagram? Voila. Why can't I just drop it on the communication diagram? I'll, I'll take a comment on that. What do you think? Right, so, my, so Michael says, you know, it, the, the, the communication diagram doesn't support it, was the first thing you said, right? And then you got to kind of go, what does that mean, you know, doesn't support it? And the, the point is that because of the layout, just because of the layout, on the sequence diagram, I said time was going to go this way and that the objects were going to go this way and that messages were going to go boink and come back, boink and come back. They're going to make that boink sound. They're going to come back, right? And when I said that, then the notion of I'm active, I'm not active, I'm active, I'm not active, it makes sense. In fact, it's almost, it almost just begs to be to be part of the diagram, doesn't it? If I didn't have those, if I didn't have those little fat, you know, I'm dashed and it goes fat, you know, whatever. I can't do it. You know what I'm talking about? It's like I'm dashed and then it goes fat. How's that? Um, I, if I'm just doing the sequence diagram and I've got a message goes out and then a little time lags and a message comes back, it begs to have a slightly different notation there. With a communication diagram, it, it, it literally, so Michael's dead on, it doesn't support it. Well, how would you even do it? You know what I mean? Like, like here, the order is calling get quantity and get product. Over here, the order calls get quantity and there's some time lag. And, you know, in my perfect world, there'd be an arrow coming back. And then there'd be the get product and it goes out and there's some time lag. And then we do get that back. Okay. The return my, in my world, returns would basically be always the thing. Um, but over here, it's like I send a message there. I, you know, I communicate there. I communicate again. Where would I, where would I put the fat? The fat. Uh, mm, not to get extra point. So, yeah, Michael said it, it would have to be animated. Were you going to say something, McKay?
right, right. Yeah. So, and for the, for the, no, that's a great, those are great thoughts for the YouTube listeners. Um, you know, Michael was kind of just musing over the notion of, of, you know, what does one come first? You know, which one would, would, would be first. Um, and, and I don't, I mean, I don't really know. Right. I mean, I, I, cause I don't even know what's that. Who said that? Oh, McKay said that. Sorry. I, I'm, Stealing, I'm stealing McKay's props and giving them, you know, inappropriately to Michael. Um, no, but, and I don't know that that makes, honestly, the, I think it's a great question that sort of, I don't even know if it makes sense. Um, and yet it is a good question because I think it's just different. Um, and I think, so the other thing that McKay said was that, um, uh, that the communication diagram was a lot more imprecise, a lot more broad in a sense, which I agree and the sequence diagram is a lot more precise, especially in terms of temporal order, right? The, the sequence diagram introduces temporal order, okay? Um, the other thing, and let me just see. So Josh is saying it feels like the sequence. Um, so, yeah, so Steve, let me see. Where were we at? Um, Steve said, uh, kind of like the way the communication diagram shows the placeholders for the inputs, or messages that are being sent. Fair. Josh said it feels like sequence would be easier to code because you can just grab those bits and use them as, as a pseudocode. Um, and hang on. And I'm actually copying, while I was over there, the link to the Amazon link uh, over to the YouTube channel that McKay posted for Tufty. Yeah, right. Um, uh, I think the sequence diagram, so Josh says, you know, the sequence diagram seems easier to code and I'm going to kind of buy that um, because, because what you have over there on the, on the, on the communication diagram on the right, I mean, I do know that there's an order in which these things happen, but it's just harder to visualize. Okay. So back to Tufty, the reason I brought up Tufty, besides the fact that any conversation in which you can talk about Edward Tufty, in my view is a successful conversation. Okay. Um, because I just think his, his role in writing, you know, a top 10 most influential professional book, you know, in my life, I, I think that that book is probably one of my top 10 any genre um, book. But um, no, what I, I look at the communication diagram and my own feeling about it is that it's almost more like understanding dependencies. You know what I mean? It's almost, because what does it tell me at a glance? At a glance, I can see sort of like who's dependent on whom. Is that grammatically correct? I think it's who's depending on, who is dependent upon whom. Um, um, it has to be equal to, you know, on whom, to whom, with whom. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you see what I mean? If I look at that communication diagram, I can see real readily that, okay, customer, you know, the order is dependent upon customer, order is dependent upon product and depends on order line, right? And has some of its own internal methods. That's what I see. If I look at the sequence diagram, it's actually harder for me. Do you see how harder, how much harder that is to answer that question by looking at the sequence diagram? And I'm going to come back to Tufty. Okay, I'm not done. With, I'm not done with Tufty. If I go back to the sequence diagram, I'm like, okay, there's the order. Okay, yeah, it talks to, sends a message over to this, you know, vertical line. I trace the vertical line back up. Oh, that's the order line. Yes. Okay. So it's, you know, see what I mean? It's like the order. It's going, and then there's a message, and then I have to like look back up to see what the objects are, you know. And then it goes even further down. This is further down. You know, and I'm having to do this little yo-yo problem to see what the dependencies are. Over on the communication diagram, it's like, boom, right there. Right? I see immediately, 
who's dependent on what, and in what context. So it conveys that kind of information. It also provides the order, you know, by it, it provides the order numerically, but the sequence diagram provides the order, you know, intuitively, uh, almost viscerally, right? It's uh, the, the sequence diagram gives me, so this is back to Tufti, by the simple decision of laying this thing out linearly, I acquire all this information that is now just built in. And in the case of the little fat, you know, little fat vertical bars, you know, when it's, when somebody's active, I'm, I'm literally begged by the diagram to put those in and, and, and the simple decision to lay the thing out versus do it like the communication diagram does buys me all that, right? Isn't that phenomenal when you think about that? So here's why that's important. Um, there are times when people are writing code and you're fighting your code, you're fighting your dumb code and you can't get the thing to work and you're twiddling bits and you just, you're dying, you know? And then there's some other times when, um, you know, you're writing English, you're writing some document or whatever, and it just doesn't sing. It doesn't, it doesn't pop, you know? And then, and you kind of do this like local edit, like what are the words I need to change? This happens a lot when I'm doing publishing with students, right? Who are just generally less experienced, you know, as, uh, as writers. And I'll get this question a lot and it kind of goes like this. Okay. What are the words you want me to change? Right. And you see the problem. I hope if I give you a communic, if you show me a communication diagram and I say, Okay, I see the order flow there. I kind of see the temporal flow, but I need you to show me the temporal flow more explicitly. So then you add, you know, the, the little numbers and the indexes, you know, 1.5.1. .1, and I'm like, okay, that's a little better, but I'm still not, I'm not feeling the order, right? And then you hand me the communication diagram and you say, okay, what lines do you want me to change? You realize how, what a broken question that is? It's a broken question. Because what I really want you to do, if I'm really insistent on that, what I really want you to do is make a sequence diagram, right? I want you to, I want you to lay the whole thing out differently. So you'll do this with like interface design where what you really need to do is throw away, you're just, you're just, polishing this little, this little dog poop, you're polishing it like crazy. It's never going to be great analogy. You be the judge. It's never going to be what you think you want it to be. Maybe you need a different thing. Maybe the whole approach needs to pivot. Sometimes with writing, it's that same idea. Your whole approach is wrong. The layout is wrong. The architecture of your, of your words. Then once you do that, then it just like really falls out. And it depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you're trying to do. But it's true of design, true of interface design, true of your code, true of debugging. A lot of times you are chasing bugs because you are trapped in an architecture for your software. And the architecture, you know, it just begged to be built as a state machine and you didn't do that. And now you're just going to suffer until you stop and re-architect the whole thing as a state machine or as a client server, or as a model view controller, or as the reason that those patterns, oh, look at me, I'm bringing it back. The clock's winding down and we're bringing it around to patterns. The reason those patterns are valuable because they are already solutions to a problem in a certain context, right? And they came because people spent time chasing their tails until someone said, you know what would actually resolve that is this. And then you see it and you're like, Oh yeah. Beautiful. Right. So that's what this is all about. The other thing that that's going to show up, I just want to see if we're, yeah, that's actually the last slide. So, oops, I didn't want to get all the way off it, but it's okay. I wanted to show you, um, I want to just mention, okay. Why did I mention Tufty? And the reason I mentioned Tufty is that as soon as you, oh, Fowler says it's mostly personal preference. Fine. I think it's interesting to explore what's the foundation for that preference, right? But Tufty talks about, you know, 
information per pixel. You realize that the same number of pixels to make that communication diagram and to make that um, uh, sequence diagram, the very same number of pixels. And, but when you just laid it out a certain way, you had temporal dependency information constantly communicated throughout the sequence diagram that you did not have on the communication diagram. Isn't that interesting? And that's really where Tufty comes in. The other thing I just want to throw out for your perusal um, is the concept of per charts and Gantt charts. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Because I don't want to go over. I'm going to have a little lecture about uh, per charts and Gantt charts. These are management tools. But I'm going to build a little, a little um, bring up some other stuff that I can talk about on uh, Monday. Um, so on Monday, and then that, and it, what you're going to see is a little bit of a correlation between all the stuff. So what I want to try to talk about on Monday, I want to talk about a little bit more about John Cleese. I want to do a little more of a patterns wrap up. I want to talk about Tufty. I want to talk about per charts and Gantt charts. And then... I'm going to, and that's what we'll do on Monday. On Wednesday, I'd like to do sort of like a final review. You know, I want to try to have a, like a study guide like we did last time. I'd like to have that on, on Wednesday. No one's going to be upset about this, right? I just, I want to be done. I want to, I want to be done. So do you. And I'm going to get the um, homeworks all fixed, like right now, um, so that they're representing what I want you to try to do. Um, I did tell you that we were going to be doing basically the same thing. So I'm not going to feel too bad about doubling back, even though there's one from like last Sunday or whatever. Just do them, get to them. And, you know, I'll take those, you know, try to get them all wrapped up. Um, ideally by the end of the semester, but under the circumstances, we can take them, you know, potentially in the finals week if we need mostly I just don't want you to quit early and then just like flat out not finish. That's a problem. I don't want you to, to get hosed that way. Um, check out the School of Rock if you want to join us for, and again, it doesn't have to be rock and roll. It can be just, it can be anything. I'm really curious, but you got to be, you know, got to brainstorm with us. And uh, I think that's it um, for today. So <clears throat> stay safe. Please stay safe. And, uh, and well physically and emotionally. And um, I am available anytime that you can find me on Discord, either to talk about the class or to just talk about life. Um, you know, just want to chew the fat. Um, you know, or you're whatever, you're just struggling. I just like to be here, you know, like to just be here. And if you can catch me on Discord, just ping me. You know, we can do a private chat on, on, uh, on Discord. All right, my friends. Take care. We're gonna um, as we go to the shutdown, we'll just let the we'll let the colonel just kind of uh, govern govern down the stream here. Yeah, it's been a good day for me and the colonel. Is that working for everybody? I think. Uh, how many, how many people are still on the, we still got, uh, we can also, I can also do this one. This one has a certain, um, a certain appeal. Um, this is Hubert and, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm thinking also, Ooh, it occurs to me for those, you know, we're done, but for those that are just still watching this far for the school of rock. Um, we can also do, you know, these are characters. We can bring, we can bring these characters to play if we wanted to do some kind of, a, it could be something dramatic. There's obviously the skater check. Um, we could do something dramatic with that. We could make a music video. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> I'm really done. Get out of here. I'll, uh, I'll see you on Discord. Yeah.